My name is Mike Hernandez, and I'm just a regular dude who is passionate for adventure. Come along with me as I share my experiences and lessons I learn along the way. Oh, as long as it's in a Jeep. Oh, and one more thing. Family isn't an important thing, it's everything. Welcome to the channel, fam. As always, I am your host, Mike Hernandez, I'm coming to you today from the garage, a little bit different spot than you're used to. But today we're gonna talk about AR-15, specifically my 11.5 inch VCM. Uh, the reason for this video is I've had a lot of uh, communication via text message, DMs, Instagram, um, even some of my cousins hit me up and just essentially asking for more information on firearms and the like. Um, all that, as you know, is coming as a result of the whole COVID-19 pandemic and certain things are happening to where a lot of you and a lot of Americans are starting to say and see, you know what, I should probably be a responsible gun owner, learn all that I can, exercise my Second Amendment rights, and essentially take responsibility uh, for my own safety and the safety of others. I'm all for it, super glad that that's happening, um, and because of that, that's the reason for this video. So with that being said, before we get into anything else, I wanna lay down the foundational four rules of firearm safety. There are four rules that are essential to firearm safety. Let's call them the foundational four. The first rule is treat all firearms like they are loaded. Even if you know they're not, get into the habit of treating them like they are. The second one is never point your firearm in the direction of something you are not willing to destroy. The third one is trigger discipline. Keep your finger off the trigger until you have committed to destroying what you're pointing it at or your sight picture is aligned. And number four, know what's beyond your target. Sometimes you'll get over penetration or you'll miss. Know that that round will be going someplace that you intended it to. And those are the four rules. Okay, now the important stuff is out of the way. Let's talk business. I will always be upfront and total you know, transparent when it comes to my business affiliations. Um, and not only is it an ethical thing to do, but it's a requirement. Um, if you are following people and they are not telling you, hey, this product was given to me for this review, um, I question that whole product review. So with that being said, um, in full transparency, I'm not affiliated with BCM. Uh, however, I am with Fieldcraft Survival. The owner of Fieldcraft Survival, uh, a good friend of mine is Mike Lover, and he is a BCM gunfighter. So because of that, us being part of the tribe, uh, we do a lot of the um, uh, marketing, we do uh, photo shoots, and essentially what that means is the photographers, who in this case, like John was excellent, and also a uh, photographer from Haley Strategic, um, they come when we're training or when we're doing stuff anyways, and they take pictures um, of real authentic trainings that we're doing. So I've definitely been rolling them as I speak. That is my relationship with BCM, Phil Craft Survival. Also, uh, Surefire did give me this, this light, um, when they were first being released, it wasn't a prototype, it was just one of the first um, ones to come out when they decided to go with the DF route of this light. So that one was given to me basically with no expectations other than I run it with the stuff that we're doing now. So with that out of the way, let's talk my AR-15 setup. Okay, this is my 11 and a half inch BCM AR. Let's go ahead and start by making it safe. I'm gonna pull the bolt all the way back. It has an empty mag in it, so it remains open. And what we're gonna do is pull the mag out and confirm that it is clear. So visually inspected, got my finger in there, you saw that it's already got some gunk on it, but there it is some more, just to verify that there is not a round in the chamber. So we'll go ahead, pull that forward, and then switch it over to uh, safety. Uh, the magazine that I pulled out, just so you guys can see it now, is a mag pull, it has on the bottom of it uh, the base pad or base plate is called a mag pot, and that's just so you can set it down in the dirt and use that as a place to rest your AR platform. So we'll go ahead and push that back in. You'll also notice that it does have um, a pretty harsh, let me see here, there we go, a pretty harsh uh, 
stippling job on it. I myself did that. It was the first time I've ever stippled anything. And I figured, you know what? I'm gonna practice on a magazine because it's safer and I won't be ruining like a Glock or anything important. So I did this one, uh, got my um, soldering iron out and tried to go as harsh as I could because I wanted this to have some really great um, friction for my hand in any situation. And that's why this is like that. So pretty easy to do. If you guys haven't done it, go ahead and give, I, I would highly make, recommend you guys trying. I mean, you can't mess it up. And if you do, these are inexpensive. Again, this is called a magazine, okay? This is a 30 round standard magazine. This is not a high capacity, scary, you know, terminology that uh, opposing sides would have, have you um, come to fear. 30 rounds is standard, uh, Magpod, and we'll move right along. So, as we begin, um, I guess we'll start more towards the business end of the AR. And as you can see here, we'll start with standard equipment, which is the M4 slash uh, M16 Colt flash hider. And you know what? It does a decent enough job. It came with the upper and for now it'll stay there. Um, as we rotate around, this is the Surefire DF that I was telling you about. Beast of lighting. Let me see if I can get in frame. Um, that Surefire gave me. This one has a lithium rechargeable battery and it, and it, and it produces upwards of 1100 lumens. Uh, on the bottom here, you can see it has a little tail which goes to a pressure pad that you can see here as I actuate it. Um, this is momentary on and off, and this is the textile on and off or the click version that you'll hear. Um, so rotating it around, the Surefire is on a BCM mount. Uh, this is a key mod mount specifically for this rail, which is also a key mod. It's a KMR from BCM. What does that mean? That means that there's a couple of mounting system. One's an M lock, one's a key mod. You can tell because these ones actually look like little keys as I rotate it there. And what I'm referring to is these little indentations or holes. Those are the key mod shapes that you'll need to get mounts for if you want to accessorize. So um, speaking of key mod, we'll rotate around and you'll see there is a QD mount here that's just for a sling. QD is quick detach. And my sling point goes in there. As we make our way down the rail, you'll see I have these Noveski covers. What's great about these is there's two stops, stops, <laughs> There's two stops here, and that's just so if I can't see or I'm fumbling around at night or we're doing low light, no, low light, or I just can't see it, but I can stick my hand in there and I know exactly where I'm at and I won't slide too far forward and too far back. So I like that. Um, not for everyone, but I prefer it. The other thing too is that as you begin to work with the, uh, the uh, um, as you begin to work the platform, it does tend to heat up, okay? So the rails do offer a little bit protection from the heat. So. Another pro there. As you look at it, I don't know if you can see it, there is a little tube here. This is a DI gun or direct impingement, which is, we call it a gas gun. What does that mean? Well, when you shoot around, the gas is expelled, bleed off the little tube here, or a gas block, and then they are directed back into the bolt, which cycles the gun, okay? This is a semi-automatic, you can see there, okay? That's what it does, it cycles the gun. Until the magazine is empty, it'll lock back. When the magazine is not, then you'll continue to have this effect without you having to run the gun. It'll do it from the gas, okay? So, for information's sake, this gas tube is a carbine length gas tube. It's a standardized length. There are, there are four lengths. You can do a pistol, you can do carbine, which is this one. You can do a mid-length and you can do a rifle length. Those are the standardized lengths of the gas system. There are different, but they're proprietary, okay? This one has a carbine length gas system. So, moving down the rail, 11 and a half inch barrel. This barrel is also their uh, lightweight variant uh, to save weight as well as also being short. Um, this one is a lot lighter than any of my other platforms that I currently have. Um, certainly lighter than any of the other ones that have longer barrels, okay? So as we, wait, as we make our way down, you'll see here this BCM upper, which is essentially what I got gifted to me, um, ends right about here. And this upper is BCM as well as the BCG or bolt carrier group, okay? On top of this upper, you're gonna find a Trigicon MRO, which stands for Miniaturized Red Dot Optic. The reason why I run this one is because, you see how it has kind of like that Mario tube looking effect at the end? 
Um, a lot of times you'll see and find with red dots or miniature red dots, you get this real small sight picture. But with this one, the Mario looking end of it um, actually helps you have a wider or a, appearance of it being wider. So that's why I like this one, just the way that you know my eyes see, okay? This one is the red dot and is also, um, also it will work with night vision on the opposite settings. Now, getting back to why I don't have sights on it, you can see there's no irons. Um, I tend to rely on the technology of today. Now, this MRO has a five-year life expectancy or battery expectancy. So one battery, five years on you know the five setting or however you want to run it for the red dot. The green dot's a little different. That's why I like that. So I've, I've had it less than three years and you know sometimes I leave it on, sometimes I don't. I can uh, uh, find uh, assurance that this one's gonna be fine. Um, I'll know if it doesn't work. And the other thing too is I run this gun so much that I know where the red dot is in you know the circle or the or the optic that you're looking through so if it goes down i can still pinpoint where it's at that's why i don't have red dots i'm sure somebody in in here is going to say oh that's totally wrong you should never do that fine man that's good on you what we're talking about is my preferences and i would prefer to have the real estate rather than worrying about you know where the backup irons are and actually that's just for this gun i have other guns with backup irons this one this is the way i have it set up personal preference okay so the MRO from Chujikan is mounted and attached to the upper with a Scholar Works mount. Let's see if we can get that up there. What's cool about the Scholar Works mount is it has like this ratcheting wheel to it. You'll feel the textile clicks as you ratchet it down onto the upper and it doesn't move. I mean, I'm very impressed with this thing. I would recommend it if you guys are asking. Um, and it does have a uh, co-witness length to it, which just means that if you were uh, running irons, it would match up to them, okay? So that concludes the upper portion of this platform. Oh, just kidding. I also have the Bravo or BCM charging handle. See, it's focusing on my face. There we go. This is the charging handle here. Um, what's cool about this one is that some, sometimes manufacturers will get too carried away and they'll make them super wide. And the problem with that is if you're running and you pull this thing tight to your body, and let's say you're not wearing a plate carrier or you know you just have a t-shirt like me and, and some of them are so wide that they just start to dig into you. And in, in terms of comfort, I like this one. BCM did a good job on it. So that's the upper portion, which is all BCM. And we have two portions of this AR-15, okay? So the bottom portion, you can see there's two takedown pins here at my pointers and that separates the upper from the lower. The lower is technically the legal firearm, so these you need to buy um, from an FFL and make sure that you follow the appropriate ways to grab these um, because this is technically the official, um, by law anyways, firearm. Uh, this one is an Aero Precision Lower. I love these Aero Precision Lowers. They do a really great job at a great price point on my Aero Precision. I have a, let's see, you can hear me running it. It is the selector switch or safety, um, and this is a semi-automatic, a fully semi-automatic, that's a joke for you guys who are newbies. Um, that's one of the things that uh, the opposing side likes to make up, you know, scary words or terminology to scare people. This is not a fully <laughs> automatic, this is a semi-automatic platform, okay? So the selector switch is a standard lower parts kit. Um, as well as uh, the release back here. Um, and then we go lower and the trigger guard is from Magpul. I like the shape, but it also gives me a little space in there for where I need it, as opposed to a standardized one that's straight across. You will notice though that this one does have a really nice trigger and that's a CMC flat, okay? Three and a half single stage means that you pull it and it clicks. Uh, there are other triggers that I have that you may have seen on my social media. They're called two stage triggers. And just like I said, Instead of just one click for one, you have two. So you'll go down like a pound, you'll feel that shelf, you'll click it again, that's the second stage, okay? This is a single stage. Um, what I'll do here is show you, because we've already verified that it's safe and I've already removed the magazine and I've already removed all the ammo, I'll show you what that looks like, okay? So we re reset it right there, there's the trigger, and, oh, safety, boom, okay? So you'll see that. Now let me go ahead and uh, cycle this again so you can see the reset on it. Here's the reset. 
So Chris, man, these things are super nice. Single stage, three and a half pound flat trigger, okay? Um, as far as the grip goes, that is a B5 systems grip. I really like these ones because of the angle. Um, when you look at this, and again, I like to say this all the time on here so you guys get a good idea of what I'm doing. I am 5'6", 150 pounds, okay? I like the shallower grips because of my size, right? Not everybody is going to be my size. As a matter of fact, most of you are not. Most of you should be bigger than me. Um, but with that being said, I prefer a more shallow angle. A standardized grip is going to give you more of a tweaked, or me, more of a tweaked wrist. And what I like about this is you can see how nicely it lines up um, my arm and hand, which, is a, which translates to me as being more comfortable. So B5, this one is stippled also. Uh, they don't come like that. Found somebody online who did it, ordered that. Uh, these I actually have on all my ARs. So I really do like these in terms of how it fits my body and size. Uh, on the back here, I have what's called a LAW tactical folding adapter or folder. And what you do here is you can click that release and just like the name implies, it folds the AR back, okay? Um, I really like these because you can put it in a bag, you can store it in your truck. Uh, if you guys have seen the, um, what is it called? Boss Strong Box that I had in my JK. Um, these easily fit in that small lockable storage. I mean, obviously only for temporary uh, traveling. I'm, I'm never gonna keep these in the vehicle long-term, but if you needed to, it minimizes the size so you can put it in there or put it in the bag. So. Since I'm back here on the law of tactical side, we'll fold this open. Um, this is called a buffer, okay? You see it's focusing on my head again. A giant forehead. <laughs> there you go. So you can see there it's an H2, okay? That H2 uh, is a designation for the weight of the buffer. So when this thing is cycling, okay? Remember we talked about the gas system and how it bleeds gas back. It's gonna run the bolt back and the bolt just doesn't, you know, hit anything. The bolt is actually, a, uh, making contact with that H2 buffer. And then in the bottom here, you have a spring. Standardized anyways, you can do something else like a silent capture, but for, for standardized stuff, that's what I have. So I have a carbine spring in here, and then an H2 buffer, which is a little bit heavier, which will slow down how fast all this is happening, okay? There is a timing to these firearms, which um, can be altered by the gas tube and the weights at the back, okay? So my system specifically, carbine, H2, carbine, okay? So this is a carbine uh, spring, and then you also have a buffer tube that extends to the back, and then this is an SBA3 tactical brace. You can see how you had a Fieldcraft Survival sticker on there, but it gets destroyed from use. Uh, the SBA3 is a pistol designating this as an AR-15 pistol, okay? The reason for that is it's less than 16 inches, um, and the way I built it was to have a pistol designation, okay? Um, after all that, uh, this does have a couple of positions that you can roll back. Like I said, it's gonna be different for everybody and their body type. Um, this one also has a QD mount that I utilize for my sling. In terms of this setup, that's it in its entirety. So let me go ahead and bring this back here. You can see that it's empty. Um, we got our 30 round mag, this is how it is, and so you can see it in relation to me, that's the size. So I also have here, let me put this down, I also have here my two point sling, and I'm actually a fan of two point slings over any of the other variants on the market. And the reason is, is I just feel like they secure a lot better, and they're more comfortable, okay? You can see here, this is a Viking Tactics uh, 511 collaboration. The Designer is uh, Kyle Lamb from VTAC or Viking Tactics. If you guys don't know him, uh, make sure you look him up. He is one of, uh, one of the guys that I look to, up to in the space being uh, a special forces guy. Um, he, does, he, he designed this while he was uh, serving in special forces in the army. And what I like about it is its adjustability. So like I spoke earlier um, in the video, you can see these are the QD. Let me see if I can get my head out of here. There we go. These are QD sling points and they have a little spring loaded release in the back that you just press and like the name implies, they're quick to attach. So with that being said, this is the front that goes to the front. You can see there. And then what I like to do is 
mount this over the other side. And there's a reason for that. I'll explain that to you right now. So you see how it's on the opposite side of the front. And the reason why I like that, oops, I'm getting tangled here. The reason why I like that is because it rolls the gun towards me as opposed to for, as opposed to the opposite side, opposite side I feel like it rolls the gun away from me. So I like this, I can sit it down on my body. Let's see here, you can see, done. And then it has this strap or release that you pull and it gives you more space to run the gun the way you need to or if you need it closer to your body or need to run or are done with it, you can cinch it down and it's tight. That's the reason why I like this sling. Um, I also use it for hunting um, and of course courses and you can see because of its close pro proximity to that sticker is why it gets destroyed. But that's the way I like to run my sling. Highly recommend these uh, 511 VTAC Kyle Lamb uh, slings. There are a couple other ones that you might see in any of my other videos, but for this one, and we're talking about my 11 and a half inch, um, that's the way I have it set up, and that's the way I like it. So I hope you like that brief breakdown of the parts and how I set up my 11 and a half inch. Um, there are many reasons why um, I have an 11 and a half inch in rotation amongst my other ones. Specifically, um, they're lighter. They're easier to maneuver, um, close quarters, um, or not, you know, if you're out in the field, they are a great solution to intermediate lengths. Intermediate lengths meaning, let's say 500 yards and closer, okay? Um, I have had many different lengths in the past and still continue to have like four others at the moment. Um, the reason I prefer the 11 and a half inch is because of its ability to stabilize rounds past 200 yards. My 10 and a half inch AR um, was able to get hits at 200 yards, but it became a little funky. Now, when you're looking at just the physics of it, you do get that full inch of space, which allows more rotation of the projectile. So if you're throwing a football, think of it that way. If you can spin it and you get a tighter spin, then it's gonna go farther, it's gonna travel nicely, and you know it'll end up as it, um, where it's intended. So longer barrel lengths are going to give you more stabilization. The other thing when you're considering um, going with an 11 and a half inch is um, that 5.56 rounds are not designed for um, 11 and a half inch barrel. So you do, you do not get full powder burn. Now, just for the sake of argument and so we don't go down a rabbit hole, um, I would say in terms of my opinion, I'd, I would not use an AR that is shorter than 10.3 inches um, in a self-defense situation. There are seven inches and they're so much fun to shoot. I mean, they breathe fire, they make all kinds of noise and you know, they have muzzle flip and it's just, it's fun. I just wouldn't depend on something like that um, in a life or death situation. 10.5, 10.3 definitely, but like I said before, past 200 yards, um, they start to struggle. As a matter of fact, uh, if you ever get a chance to come or, or talk with uh, some of my peers, they'll tell you in combat situations, again, this isn't my story, this is theirs, that they've literally had to, with a 10.4, you know, uh, hold it like a grenade launcher and fire at you know, targets at past, dis past intermediate distance in a combat situation. The only experience I have, and hopefully I'll have a clip in here, is as I'm trying to engage a still nine and a half inch target, I've had some issues. I do get hits, it's just inconsistent. So with that being said, um, the smaller profile or lightweight barrel that comes with this 11 and a half inch um, is nice for weight savings. However, with the shorter barrel and lighter weight, you will get a little bit of like muzzle flip, right? Um, if you've ever gone to one of the Fieldcraft Survival Courses, you'll see uh, our instructors talk about how AR-15s are an inherently easy to fire, right? Um, you'll see Mike stand on one leg, hold this with one hand, okay, pull it out and fire several rounds off. Bam, 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 bam. And you'll get no recoil, you'll get no anything. What you're seeing is muzzle rise or muzzle flip, okay? The way that these are designed and tuned, it's not gonna be like a large um, caliber firearm that's kicking back, you know what I mean? Or a shotgun or something like that. Um, that's inherent with AR-15s. Now, getting back to the 11 and a half incher, since it's shorter than most sizes, right? 
um, you are gonna get a little bit more of that here, which you're just gonna have to mitigate with, you know, the way you grip the gun, whether it's C-clamp or however, um, and go from there. That's really the only con though. I mean, when you're looking at it, it's lightweight, it's compact, it's, it's um, accurate. Uh, I mean, what more could you ask for? Especially if, you know, you're small like me, it fits me very well and intermediate lengths and, and below, it does great. So um, those are some of the reasons why I chose this platform and like to carry it. Um, like I said, I have other ARs. Each one is a mission specific uh, AR. For example, on the other end of it, an 18 inch or like a Mark 12, I'll typically use as a DMR or a designated marksmanship rifle, right? Um, that one I will take up to a thousand yards. Um, for past intermediate and we'll, we'll go into you know uh, longer distances. That's another video But I hope you like this one. These are the reasons why I chose this um, the reasons why I prefer it uh, Make sure that when you're you know taking into consideration your preferences or things you'd like to get into um, A good place to start is a 16 inch AR as a matter of fact I've had like three or four over the years built my own had my own um, that is just a good solid foundational system that will take you, you know, 500 yards and farther. You can still, you know, maneuver it through a close quarter situation. Um, and you won't have to worry about any of the other, you know, um, laws or opinion letters that come out from time to time, depending on who's in power, whether it's the left or the right, um, from the ATF, which regulates these things. A 16 inch AR is the way to go. And then if you're like in a more um, liberal or restrictive state, make sure you uh, comply <laughs> to the rules that they have set up. If you don't like them, make sure you vote them out. Yes, California, I am talking about you and your nonsense. So with that being said, I'd like to take this time to recognize our law enforcement, first responders, medical staff, doctors, nurses. You guys right now are on the front line of this major pandemic of COVID-19 and coronavirus. Um, and I just want to uh, send my prayers out your way. I myself, um, in behavior health, have had a little bit uh, of, it's not exposure because I haven't been exposed to COVID-19 in that sense, uh, but just operating uh, within behavior health and some of the um, at risk or higher need uh, um, communities can understand and relate. The other end of it too is, you know, my wife is a nurse practitioner and is directly involved with healthcare as such. So just a real brief kind of update on the channel and what we've been going through, like you, you know, things have been changing. Um, my wife did get exposed to COVID-19. Today is the 31st, a uh, little over 19 days ago. Um, and just to kind of give you a quick testimony, of what happened, um, we just got our test result, or she just got her test results this morning, and she tested negative for COVID-19. The scary part was that she was working on a patient who in turn had to go to the hospital. It took several days for them to work the criteria, then several days for him to take the test, and then several days for that information to come to my wife, and then the process starts all over. She had to go get tested because she's directly involved. Long story short, 20 days is up. She never had any symptoms, didn't carry anything, and tested negative for COVID-19. So, you know, I just wanna thank, you know, the big guy upstairs for watching over our family. I pray that he does the same for you guys. If you guys aren't directly involved, uh, make sure that you are supporting, you know, the frontline first responders. They are out there for us. And if you are one, again, I appreciate you. If not, you know what, man? You don't have to be directly involved to make a difference. Take care of your family. I understand that we're all going through a lot right now. Um, just to kind of give another report on what's going on in our community, the grocery stores are starting to um, show signs of recuperating here on the, at the end of March, beginning of April, tomorrow is the first. And they're still um, low on stock, but not to the point to where we would go without. Um, so we are starting to see a turnaround. Um, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Make sure that you guys, you know, pay attention to the medical professionals that are in charge of this. And even, I mean, me, who am I? I'm just a YouTuber, right? Um, or a journalist, right? Those people typically have motivation. Make sure you get good sources, you know, follow the CDC, follow the recommendations, um, you know, of your local uh, um, government and eventually this too will pass, right? 
So in terms of the channel, um, I'm still gonna do videos weekly. I'm still on that one day a week video. We are growing, guys. I really appreciate your support. Um, we are multifaceted here. So today, you know, it was a gun video. Next, it'll be, you know, Gladiator stuff or JL. Um, I did get a lot of parts for my JL. We do have a, some new partners that are wanting to get involved with us. So stay tuned for that. Um, again, first responders, I appreciate everything you're doing. I'm praying for you. Um, and if you like this content, make sure you share it with your family, share it with your friends, give me a thumbs up uh, or a thumbs down, comment, tell me how you feel about certain things, tell me you hate that I don't have uh, iron sights on that. <laughs> and I, know, I know it's coming. Um, and we'll continue to move right along and I'll catch you on the next episode. Talk to you soon.